or Wednesday, October 26th. We have uh, three items on our agenda. Do we have any general public comment? Nope, okay. We'll go ahead and close the general public comment. If we can take the first item, please. Item number one is a commu community development department report relative to the energy efficiency and conservation block grant of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act program. All right. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mark Hoffman. I'm representing the Community Development Department this morning. Since the Community Development Department, CDD, was authorized by Council in June of 2010 to administer the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant, we were requested to report on a monthly basis to the Ad Hoc Committee on uh, our uh, and we have been doing that. This is our 14th report. Uh, we have been told that in the Jobs Committee it may not be necessary to report monthly, but only as necessary, and you can instruct us which way you want to handle the matter. Yep. But nevertheless, because we're in a transitional period, we still followed the format of a monthly report and provided you status with the various projects that are funded by this $37 million grant. Um, that's attachment A, which uh, contains data provided by the funded departments. There are about eight city departments and agencies funded by this grant, and the projects range from funding municipal retrofits to commercial retrofits, nonprofits, um, and a variety of studies and incentive programs in the area of energy and conservation. Before you today in this report are some items for action because <clears throat> there have been a couple changes uh, that are being proposed in this report. Namely, um, in the case of the housing department, uh, some of the developers uh, decided not to accept the grant funds that they were awarded through an RFP process. And so those funds are being redistributed to other agencies and projects that have already been approved by council. In that way, they can expand their efforts and not go through another RFP process and uh, continue the work, which is time sensitive for this grant. Secondly, um, the general services municipal retrofit line item of over $13 million, uh, as you probably know, contained a few million dollars for QECB funding um, the bond in interest. Initially, there was going to be a bond of 37 million, then it came down to 17, and ultimately it came down to 12 million. And what the ECBG funds were used for is bond and interest repayment. So as the bond amounts came down, the requirement for ECBG to pay back the, the, the couple, first two years of principal and interest on the bond decreased as well. So initially there was going to be nine million of ECBG used. Ultimately, three million was used. Um, so what General Services did with the bulk of the money is put it into other retrofits outside of the QECB. But there was about $400,000 left over beyond that. And the mayor's office um, had um, a few proposals for that, that funding. Half of the 400000 or almost four, half of it, is going to Cyclavia in April 2012. Uh, the DOE has approved the use of funds, and it's really good money, frankly, going to other city departments to staff the, uh, this weekend activity. Um, the other money of the 400000 is primarily being uh, used for some contracts uh, in order to study and publicize ECBG efforts. Um, financial advisors to advise on how we can leverage more money in the future when the ECBG runs out for additional municipal retrofits and jobs. And then thirdly, uh, there are some activities such as a Mediterranean climate um, initiative that's, um, that is uh, resulting from the climate study that the mayor's office has contracted with UCLA for. and. Uh, and so there'll be some conferences and other activities emanating from that study so we can continue the work and implement its, uh, the, the study's findings. So uh, those are the primary uh, 
proposals. Otherwise, the report uh, provides basic status. I should indicate that the report you have in front of you has uh, expenditures of a little over $15 million as of August. Um, we now have September numbers. Departments provide those towards the end of September, uh, towards the end of October. And so we know that the grant has now expended $17 million. And when you add the QECB of $3 million, which was expended this week, then we're up to $20 million out of the $37 million. So the expenditures are progressing. Uh, bear in mind, we, were, we had spent $100,000 basically in July of 2012. So to spend $17 million in one year, I think, uh, indicates some progress. And I think DOE is pleased with that progress. We have some of the key departments here. If you have any questions, or I, I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have, have them. OK. Um, first question I have is, why did these housing projects decide to uh, not use those funds? Were they already, they decide not to do energy efficiency in them, or? Oh, yeah. Housing will join us for Start. the answer. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Krista Klein from the Housing Department. Uh, those few departments we realized would not be able to make the expenditure deadline, so we started reallocating the funds. We are funding one of them th through a different source of funds in housing. Mm -hmm. um, we just knew that they couldn't spend the money in time, and we didn't want to pull it in May and not mm -hmm. be able to spend it any other way. So. And so the projects that we put it into, instead, they, they were able to step yes. up and do that with additional energy efficiency that they had not planned initially in their projects? Or? Correct. Some of the um, items were in the audit, mm -hmm. but were not funded. And so they've all been audited. They'll, every single one of them will increase their energy efficiency. Um, so they'll be well over 20 percent um, increase in energy efficiency with this additional money and um, make the tenants more comfortable. Some of them have in-unit um, mm -hmm. different work items. So. Well, well, housing is up. Do you want to ask him anything? I'll no, ask no, about, okay. No, okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Um, one technical correction on page two, for what it's worth. It's seek levia with an A in the middle, as in L A, uh, instead okay. of seek levia. Um, also, when we look at um, some of the the funds that are spent on seek levia, um, what you know, I've been carrying the motions for this. It's been great to see the explosion of uh, this, which definitely reduces our, um, our carbon emissions. It definitely, um, I think, builds alternative transportation. So it's a lot of bang for the buck. Um, the same time, can anybody, I don't know, maybe from the mayor's office or somebody else that we've been working, obviously, with Ciclavia, talk about how some of the money will be spent in terms of education? Um, because I think where we can, um, we're, we're using that to kind of, uh, you know, reimburse ourselves, make sure the costs are covered, and that has a, a net positive effect. Um, but one of the things it would be great to see is, is kind of a larger city educational presence. Um, and I think that can be leveraged with, with volunteers and others, um, you know, City Hall, to have some things set up to try to get to as many of the, the folks as possible, the other ways of building on, on this to create more, um, you know, in the interim days between these events. Good morning. Beth Jones from the Mayor's Office. Um, in terms of education, um, <clears throat> the, the event itself is basically a, a big, giant educational um, event that shows people how they can get out of their cars and enjoy Los Angeles and the streets on their bicycles. We are, um, we are also looking at, as you suggest, adding some additional specific types of educational opportunities to the Ciclavi events themselves. Um, with more booths or um, outreach materials. And then we have been developing some, um, some stories um, and video and things like that that show how the, the event worked. And we're interviewing folks who talk about you know, how they didn't know they could use these streets this way and, and that it's great to be reducing carbon emissions and, and, um, and improving the environment by getting the cars off of the streets. I mean, I, I would say that the the um, on the education front since we have so much real estate and you know somebody who's gone out there the anything that's kind of interesting you stop at and so i think we have you know in your average um community fair that we do in a park there's probably more city departments and you know dwp sanitation others talking about environmental work that we're doing and ways to get um, discounts on you know for low-income customers ways that businesses can help retrofit green you know go green etc I think there's some real opportunities. It wouldn't necessarily take a big chunk of this money. It's just as we sign this money to staff that um, 
you know, and, and I, I know the mayor's office and council offices have a wealth of experience of doing that at, in other events. It's just not out there in Ciclovia yet as much, and I think it would be a great opportunity in April to, to do that as well, because when we point to what's coming of this, we can do the overall, you know, uh, count on how many people are there and how much, uh, uh, how much pollution and carbon emissions we've taken out of the, the air. We also, I think, should be able to point to, uh, you know, these are obviously folks who are already inclined to, to be environmental, and uh, to miss that opportunity with so many people um, would be um, would be a, a pity. So, we're happy to work with you on that. But I want to make sure some of that is assigned to reach, outreach to our other environmentally minded departments to have a bigger presence there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything on Ciclovia? Okay, um, and then. Last set of questions on, on the reduction of the um, of the loan fund. What is the impact now going to be in terms of how many folks we touch with that? This is on the QECB. Yeah, on the QECB. Uh, there are now 52 municipal properties planned for a retrofit. Um, obviously, it was a higher number with a higher bond, um, but. What was important was that and that was a capacity issue. I mean, we just didn't feel like we could do. As it was much? an energy savings issue, and I'll let General. Okay. Yeah, just walk us through why the issue. reduction happened and, and what we think we're going to be able to do with what's left. India Griffin General Services. Sure. Would you just bring the, the microphone a little closer? Is that better. Yeah, yeah. Um, the reduction was in the cost of issuance, mm -hmm. so the original amount that was set aside for the buildings has remained the same. There were 52 buildings that came out of the audit that can meet the 20% energy reduction requirement for the QECB issuance. Mm -hmm. That's how we developed um, what the initial project amount was. And we overestimated what the cost of issuance was going to be, so it was, it was eventually dropped to the $3 million. So the, run me by the numbers that you said before, Mark. They, weren't they much larger than $3 million reductions in the overall leverage we're going to get out of the fund, right? Well, initially, there had been um, hoped uh, over 100 buildings would be retrofitted at okay. the cost of $37 million. Right. And the council, um, in order to ensure that there would be payback of the bond, uh, requested that a consultant study the payback, the energy savings of the 100 some odd buildings. Based on that assessment, the consultant was most comfortable with the 20% return on 20% uh, energy savings on 52 buildings. And so this current gotcha. bond proceeds with 52. That, but that still allowed some savings of ECBG that could be spent on some other uh, retrofit projects that may not have uh, been 20% or may have been. Okay, gotcha. Mr. Parks? Yeah. Let me just ask a couple of questions on that issue. Uh, the concern I have, and I think we've gone through this a couple of times, on cost neutral, and although we're reflecting a savings, uh, one of the things that even on the last report by the CAO, they never defined specifically that there would be a cost neutral. They said it may be, it could be, uh, we think it will happen. And I'm just concerned that uh, if there's any impact, uh, because it's going to be a very fluid way we count this, because we get a bill from water and power, and we don't really, at the end of the day, we won't know whether the 20 percent is because the bill was less or, or we stopped using it other places, and so it's very fluid in what and how we pay it. So I'm just concerned that we're taking any money from that municipal retrofit program uh, that uh, until we get an assurance that these 52 properties are going to hit the 20 percent at a minimum and we're going to get a cost neutral on paying the debt service. And so that was one item, and although I, I don't uh, uh, disagree on what they are looking to make these changes, I don't, you know, these, those things are not a, a big issue. It's just that of all the money that uh, we have to select from, uh, we take it where it's, to me, the most critical part is we may just be meeting our obligation, and yet we're moving money before we get there. The um, the QE, excuse me, the ECBG, if it lends any comfort, mm -hmm. the $3 million is supposed to pay the first three years worth of bond, right. and in, bond interest. And the, the um, point behind that is 
the projects have to be retrofitted, the savings have to occur, and then when those do occur, there should be a decrease in um, the expenditures of general fund money that currently go to uh, general services for energy payments. Um, you're probably correct. There can be a number of factors that lead to decreases in energy, but I think what the point of this study was by the consultant is that the retrofits that are being proposed have the likelihood of reducing energy by 20 percent or yeah. more. And so without those retrofits, it is unlikely we would at least get that amount of energy savings. And so it is that savings that is supposed to... Oh, I, I understand. I've read it 20 times. <laughs> I think the dilemma is I had a concern at the very end. Even the CAO could not say definitively. They say likelihood. And, and of all the things that we're doing, we're saying, well, we are just in the midst of it, and we're going to move $400,000 before we even know if we got the return. And knowing how the, the city's bills come in, uh, they're going to tell us what our, our, our energy bill is, and we'll pay, basically take credit if it's down that these energy efficiency areas cause that. But there's nothing that specifically building to building will show that reduction because it's just one big pot of money. And so that's what I'm concerned. The other thing I was wondering about is when we talk about the, uh, the issue of the regional climate uh, plan, is that a general, sun, a general uh, services project or is that an outside consultant? Who does that? The uh, mayor's office is um, uh, taking the lead on the development of the, the plan. Um, and this is actually a result of motions that came to council um, in 2008 and 2009 um, to approve um, this direction. And what we're doing is we have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we have agreement with the county of Los Angeles who is using an equal amount of their energy efficiency block grant funding to look at uh, greenhouse gas um, emissions inventory for the region. And we have contracted with UCLA to fund um, the development of a model of what Los Angeles will look like in 2041 and 2061 mm -hmm. so that we will um, and we'll be able to see from that model um, things like uh, temperature, what average temperatures will be, what will the sea level rise be, what will be the effect of storms on the sea level rise on our coast, what are the changes to our climate, to jet streams, that kind of information. But, but that's existing mayor staff not going out to consultant or anything like that? Well, UCLA is the is UCLA, the okay, so the, the, they're the, they're the uh, they will create this study? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move the CAO report as amended. And go on to item number two, please. Thank you. Please report. Item number two is the CAO report relative to the, to the era transportation projects appropriation requirements for fiscal year 2011 and 2012. Good morning. Good morning. We allow with the Office of the CCAO. In 2009-10, Council and Mayor approved uh, fund funding for MICLA for our transportation projects of $96 million. These projects are managed by the Department of Transportation, the Bureau of Street Services, Engineering, and Sanitation. Every year, we transmit a report to this committee, similar to the one before you, requesting annual appropriations departments based on estimated expenditures. The report before you recommends appropriations totaling over $22.8 million for staffing and construction related costs. They're delineated on attachment B. The city expected to be reimbursed for these expenditures. The current total federal authorization is $95.36 million. This is a reduction of about $1.97 from the original authorization due to lower construction costs. Changes to project authorization, status of projects, and expenditures as of June 2011 are summarized on attachment A. I also want to point out a correction to attachment A. Page A-2 under sanitation, um, the numbers for sanitation for reimbursements received in 2009-10 and 10 to 11 were reversed. So the project number 592, the reimbursement amount should be 981550 and project number 591, it should be 398241 
So I just want to make that correction for the record. And if the clerk wants, I can send a revised uh, list for the council file. The projects, three of the 19 projects have been completed. 13 will be completed by June 2012 as originally planned. And then there are three main remaining bridge projects that will be completed in December 2012. These are all within the um, allowed time frame to complete these projects. This report also recommends that this, the use of interest earning, which is uh, about 261000 at this time, to reimburse the city for debt service costs. And if there are any remaining funds, we would transfer it as related costs. The report also reiterate recommendations from previous reports emphasizing billing and reimbursing for city costs. And the balance of the recommendations in the report are administrative in nature, such as cleaning out prior year's accounts. Um, included in this report is an attachment, and that's attachment C. The purpose of this table is to illustrate um, related cost issues that have been brought up in the past by the controller's office. Sorry. When you look at attachment C, it shows the authorization the city has for city staffing, how much we've billed against that amount, and what the overhead would be when we're able to bill. Um, I have some of the departments here if you have any project specific questions. Just as a general information, could you just remind us of how these 19 projects were identified initially? Well, there were, when it was known to the city that um, there would be money coming, the d engineering was charged by the mayor's That's office right. to right. put together a project sheets with all projects under consideration from every single department, including some of the proprietary departments. Those lists went to uh, several of the council committees, and then after that, it was weeded down to these projects for transportation projects. Okay. And then let me ask you also, um, on looking at the project or the attachment A, mm -hmm. uh, is, is there any ability to identify those by council district or are those regions so broad that they, are encomp uh, they encompass a number of council districts? So the first thing, if you, if you don't have a good sense of what these okay. regions are, there's no ability to determine what area. I'm just wondering, do we have an ability to add council districts uh, impacted? Right. Well, our original report identifies these projects by council district. Most of them, if you look at street services and sanitation with citywide, it's very broad. Engineering's are by council district, and you can find it in the original council reference. We just don't have enough room okay. in the table to add all these columns in. And then DOT is quite broad. It's citywide. Okay. So most of them are citywide. Right. I would just ask if there's some way that when we report them that because and then the other issue is what is citywide? Are we talking about multiple council districts or every council district uh, being impacted? But it, the first thing I think most people look at within the council is how does it impact their district? And, and if, you, or if you're not familiar with the general terms of the regions or the okay. valley regions, there's no way to determine what that impact or what the boundaries are. Okay. So that would be the other area. Yeah, in future we reports, we will define the regions okay. in the tables. Okay. And then the other thing I was going to ask you is, uh, is this something that happens uh, as far as the use of the uh, uh, interest on debt service? Is that something that happens on project by project, or is that a standing policy that we use it for debt service? Actually, it's um, not a policy. This grant is a little bit different from, for example, CDD's grant. We are fronting the money first, and we're billing based on actual costs. When you look at the block grant, we draw down based on estimated expenditures. So theoretically, that money comes to us within a few days, and we're using their money to pay our bills. So this is the first time that we are getting interest earning on money that we've received. What's happening is the department is doing a very good job in billing Caltrans and a little bit late in billing ourselves for our staffing costs. So the money that we receive in Caltrans is accumulating interest as we wait for MICLA to pay the general fund. I would just ask the CEO to look at that as a general policy that would appear that the interest uh, we should look at consistently as debt service when we're dealing with issues as opposed to uh, at some point taking it out and using it for 
other programming, it would seem as okay. our interest that we pay debt service as our first priority. And right. So maybe we ask the CAO to look at that as because a Because city is incurring this debt service to um, deliver these projects. That's right. And so that's why I would ask that we look at that as a city policy that would be uh, routine, that that would be our first option of okay. debt service. So you yeah. like the recommendation then, right? Yes, I do. Uh, let me just ask a couple other things is that on uh, how, uh, how much in jeopardy are we if uh, the MTA does not uh, support our, our front loading recommendation? I'm not sure what you mean by front loading. Well, we say that we're uh, on this project, we're using uh, MICLA uh, in the sense, and it depends on MTA uh, uh, basically support or uh, that the source of funding that it's based on, let me see if I'm confusing something. Yeah, uh, most transportation grants we do have to front it first and w ask for reimbursements later. I, I don't think they really care how we front it okay. as long okay. as we don't ask them for the money for it. Okay, so there's, okay, so we're fronting, let me ask you, does any, t do, do we at any time use or uh, run across a situation where we're front loading the short-term Mikola money and it ends up being pushed into long-term debt or is it always commercial paper and we are resolving it in a short time? We have done it on commercial paper to my knowledge. We've also done it on storm damage from the 2005 and it was also commercial paper. Okay. The thing that I want to make sure we ask you to, at the CAO to look at the issue of when we're talking about commercial paper that we clearly use that as a priority for short term mm -hmm. and that it not be uh, something that gets pushed into long term uh, debt at any time. No, as a matter of fact, when the reimbursements come in, we return that money to MICLA. Okay. All right. And then my final question is that anything we can do to get the departments to bill more rapidly? Yes, we are trying. Okay. Is there, I mean, is there a plan or, or how do we address that? I think the problem with um, departments is they're all very short on their administration staff. They are billing Caltrans, which is, you know, if we have to choose where they're going to bill first, we like them to bill the outside grant first and instead of ourselves. They have, when we closed the year last year, we asked departments to estimate what their expenditures were to June 30th on staffing costs, and they did do that. So that cash has been transferred to the general fund from the we do a reconciliation report once all the final costs are in, and that's the report that we're waiting on for departments to take care of. But we do ask them to estimate to June 30th. Okay, thank you. Uh, one question about the bicycle grades. Um, wh why, were the, why was there a reduction in the bicycle grade uh, line item? It's based on the contract that's awarded. Uh, usually they give you an authorization, and then once your bid amount comes in in your award, they adjust by side contract so amount. So we're able to still We don't get worth. to keep the money. But However, we did get an exchange for STPL reimbursements, reimbursable projects, right, about 1.4 million. Is, is the work the same amount, though? It's about 1.4. No, no, no. The, the actual work, like the number of grades covered, are we, the, the actual work, the scope. One over one. With the reduction, are we still achieving the, the same amount? I see a lot of heads going this, so I think it's yes. I'm assuming it's achieving the same amount <laughs> okay. at the end of the day. All right, cool. That was my question. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't a reduction. That number. Were we, would we have been able to, to do more if we had, uh, I mean, in other words, does the contractor have capacity to do more um, since they came in less? Uh, sanitation is saying yes. Come on, Sanitation. Come on up. Don't be shy. <laughs> Has that savings been reprogrammed? I'm sorry? Have the savings been reprogrammed, the lower amount? Um, or not yet? It has been reprogrammed, yes. The uh, mm -hmm. authorization to the city has been adjusted officially. Where was it put into instead, do you know? We don't know how they shuffle it. Some of it might have gone back to us for our bridge program, because if you notice, the bridge went up a little bit. Hmm. But how they do the total pot shuffle, we really don't know. Well, somebody's got it. Is anybody in here now? What happened with the pot shuffle? I like that. Well, so just on the capacity front, you, the contractor, we could achieve more of these throughout the city and the, and the contractor could? Yes, um, Arnell Aguilar Sanitation. Um, because of the economic environment and the uh, bids that have come in, uh, the bids have come in lower for that, uh, for that work. But if, um, uh, 
if we had uh, the scope for additional work, then yes, we would have um, uh, uh, received bids at that higher uh, level. So, Madam CEO, CEO this, is, this is an important piece. How does this stuff get reshuffled? What's the process for it? And is there any check-in with the legislative body about that? For instance, if we, you know, if, it, if we had okayed and it was a priority to do $3 million worth and we get uh, 1.555275 worth, and let's say we want to do $3 million, why aren't, uh, why aren't we looking at... Uh, Putting the other million and a half into expanding the scope, but instead it gets reprogrammed. Mr. Clark, Jim Clark, Director of Federal Relations. I'm going a little bit out on a limb, but we sure. did we did this uh, also with some other projects like uh, Harry Bridges Boulevard and others. So what I understand, we we give the money back basically to Caltrans, and then um, they reallocate it back to us. They give us a credit for that, and then we get it in our normal uh, allocation for um, our our RST. To our STP um, allocation that we get from Caltrans that we're able to use for other projects. So and what they do is, I, as I understand it, they use it on their R. They take the money back. They use it on their R projects, and then they give us a credit for that for our just non R projects. Yeah, that's okay. And, and the, only, the only reason why is it, it would be good to establish some sort of protocol for if we are coming in beforehand because it's tough to respond to it afterwards. That. Um, you know, we may be perfectly happy with that, but we may also have wanted to do more in this area rather than the other. Um, but uh, it's kind of tough to unscrew that light bulb once it's in. Um, Mr. LeBanche, any questions? Just a follow up, thank you. Madam CAO, this is a breakdown by council district. Yes. And I think, I think it would be helpful if we broke it down by the seven planning areas of the city. If we look at that from a regional standpoint, I think that would be helpful. And, but also break it down. I think each council person would like to know individually. So I just have a friendly uh, request, if that's right, Mr. Chair, that we break it down regionally by the seven planning areas, which are North Valley, South Valley, uh, West Los Angeles, Central, South, East, East, and Harbor. Whatever, whatever the s official. And I think, Mr. Parks, I think that's what we took. That's one of the first things we worked on maybe 20, 25 years ago when you were commander is regionalism in the sense of, of boundaries. So if we look at it from a standpoint of regionalism, at least one report would list all these projects by region and by the planning area, and then uh, by individual, by council district. Does that kind of make that like a little idea, Mr. Parks, that would be helpful to focus on to make sure regions of the city are getting their fair share? I think so, Mr. Parks. Mm -hmm. I think so. there are too many <laughs> sirens. Okay. We're, we're making progress. We're making progress. Yeah. Also, okay, on that issue here, and I just want to ask Ron Olive uh, to come forward here. I took a complaint today from a citizen about the horrible condition. Uh, Ron, how long have you been with the city of Los Angeles? 27 years. 27 years. So in, in, uh, uh, are we paving streets? Re I'm not slurry seal. Slurry seal is... The slurry seal. Are we doing what we did? I know in the 90s we did a lot of grind down, repave, like 225 miles a year. What are we doing now? We are doing 235 miles of resurfacing. Resur actual year. resurfacing, yes, crew sir. 152 and others. Yes. And, and uh, so that's good that we're doing that. How much slurry seal are we doing? How many miles? We are doing 400 miles of slurry seal this year. And this slurry seal is a coat to protect the water from getting into the asphalt that destroys the asphalt. Yes. Okay, here's the tough question. How much of the bigger, more uh, efficient, if I size-wise, but bigger, it may weigh more, buses, how much are the buses hurting our roadways? Is it significant? Because the streets not last in 20, 25 years anymore. Streets that you paved in the 90s are now really beat up. Substantially so, sir. Substantially. Have we talked to the MTA yet? Yes, we have had some discussions, yes. Yeah, so I think it's something we should look at. I don't know if there's any new technology that would lighten the load uh, or whatever it is, but it is significant, and uh, and I think we got to look at it. Yeah, we're looking at technology on the other end with some um, different asphalt mixes, some uh -huh. anti-rutting oils, things right. like that, things that we can use to help prevent some of that or mitigate some of that damage. And, and, our, and any, with any of this money, you're looking at the curb lane or where the bus is, of redoing that lane, but leaving lanes, what would be two and one, 
lane three, total, total uh, repave, but where the center of the street still has some life in it, because I know you like to go curb to curb, but if, if the curb lane is so destroyed, yet the two center lanes are not and the turn lane are not, are you looking at any options like that? Have you thought outside the box in that way? And if not, could you? We certainly are with uh, the, the funding sources that are eligible to do so, such as Proposition C. Unfortunately, with the ARA, Again, and the shovel readiness um, right. uh, requirements. You got to um, do the, the environmental process to be able to totally reconstruct was not available to us. So right. this is strictly grind and pay projects for the R. And last question: Can we do a citywide EIR on? Because uh, if we're going to fix streets, as long as you got clearance from utilities, it's pretty basic, correct? Environmentally, there's not a lot of. That's correct. Environmentally, that's correct. Got it. So what we should, I'm just thinking, Mr. Chair, just mm -hmm. to be ready mm -hmm. for any shovel that could be ready, mm -hmm. is we do a citywide EIR on all streets or all sections or all region so you could expedite the ability to get people back to work on that. And are some of this money going to our, our we were in partnership with some private contractors on this work with the haulers, with the asphalt haulers? Yes. Right. Yes, on the trucking support, yes. Trucking support, yes. et cetera. But mostly it's 152, 252. Yes. And others. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Any other questions on the transportation? Uh, that's okay. Now we'll move the CAO report. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And let's go and get the overall update. Item number three is a verbal report from the mayor's office and CAO relative to the status of the ARA of 2009 program. Jim Clark, Director of Federal Relations and part of the Mayor's ARA team, and I'm joined by Tyler Munhall with the CAO's office. Well, let me start with some good news. Um, Build Your Dreams, BYD, which is the U.S.-Chinese uh, manufacturing company manufacturing electric hybrid vehicles, solar power systems, LED lighting, and rechargeable batteries, had their headquarters opening this week in Los Angeles. Good news on that. There was $1 million of ARA funding that went into that project uh, through CDBG. Uh, it will create about 150 jobs are estimated. So here's an example. The Obama administration is looking for examples of where our dollars are making a difference. Well, here's where one of the places where it made a difference. Uh, just to, uh, Mr. Clark, our dollar sounds like a somebody. American Let's, Recovery yeah, and Reinvestment. Yeah, just say American Stimulus. Recovery. That's why I hate when they use the word Tibet when they talk about Tom Bradley International Airport. It's Tom Bradley International. So say American recovery. I think if we say that, people will remember that better. Very good. Um, you just had Ron Olive up here, and we had a, a highlight of we completed the 75th of 100 miles of American Recovery Reinvestment Act funded uh, street <laughs> resurfacing projects. We'll start uh, the meeting earlier to accommodate the long term. <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to short. Uh, including we've done all 57 miles of uh, re street resurfacing that we were going to do in the San Fernando Valley. For the, so for those people in the San Fernando Valley listening, you got your streets resurfaced before anyone else in the city was able to do that. Um, also, on the, we talked earlier about the Q, Qualified Energy Conservation Bonds, QECBs. Uh, what what uh, you might be interested to know is that the interest rate on those bonds is 0.62%, so less, less than 1% interest rate. It's projected that we'll probably pay $600,000 of interest over 17 years on uh, $11.8 million worth of uh, bonds. So that's a pretty good uh, interest rate, I would say, that we were able to get from that. Um, what I've provided to you also, and I think uh, Councilman Labonge pointed this out earlier, but we, uh, once a check gets cut and sent to the consultant that's working on it this week, we will have our uh, new website up. This is a uh, sample of what the home page of the website will look like. I think you all have that. Um, in addition, that one of the things that we're most proud of and that we're the first in the nation to do is this interactive map that we will have to be able to track the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act projects. Um, and though uh, we, to give you one example, we just uh, you will be able to track these projects by council district. We just happen to arbitrarily pick one council district called CD13, mm -hmm. uh, but you can click on the nice photo of the member of the city council and what you will get is actually a listing of all of the stimulus projects that are in that council district. You will also be able though, to, if you want to, and we do this for our friends in Congress, to be able to do this by congressional district. You can do it by in a particular street address and it'll show 
uh, not only that street address, what project is there, but all the stimulus projects that are located within a one uh, mile radius of that particular address. Or you could do it by project type. So if you wanted to look at all the housing projects or street resurfacing projects. So we hope, keeping my fingers crossed, that this will be uh, up and available for the public uh, within the next week. So to do, yes, sir. We, we may want to do a little test run just to work out the bugs on it before we, to make sure. But uh, we're pretty confident. And we've got listed every, partic every single uh, stimulus project, every <coughs> street light is is identified every bike safe grate is identified every work site for uh, uh, job training is identified where we're doing the energy efficiency in buildings is identified so people really get a sense in their own neighborhoods of what the stimulus uh, projects are being able to do and that's part of the transparency that uh, that's required under under these grants um, What's that? Web, web page address again? Uh, when we get it up, it'll be www.larecovery.gov or dot org. Yeah. LA Is that right? Wait a minute. It's a, it's wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's on, is it on the? See, I didn't have you do it every week. No, so now we'll, you don't we'll get it. I'm sorry. It's recovery.lacity.org. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking recovery. of the. It's recovery.lacity. Just recovery. Yeah. But right now, if you were to go to that, you would get the what the existing one is. So we're still um, have this as uh, in a test case right now. Um, some other news: um, the uh, the Office of Management and Budget in the White House has published a memorandum um, dated September 15th, which uh, talks about uh, a requirement now for federal agencies to accelerate the uh, rate of spending of the stimulus funds. Um, they've set a date that they want all of these funds spent by September 30th, 2012. Uh, this is to, fe or 2013, excuse me. This is um, to uh, federal agencies. Um, and this has an impact on two of our projects that we believe, the Smart Grid project, which is a five-year project, and also the justice assistance grants that we're using for um, the LA RICS Regional Interoperable Communication System. Uh, which uh, was given a one-year extension. Mm -hmm. How this works, though, is that the federal, it's, it's not on a project-by-project -project basis that you can request a waiver. It has to be for the entire program. So we're checking right now with the Department of Energy to see if they're going to request a waiver for the smart grid project, because most of our spending is in the third, fourth, and fifth years of that project, mm -hmm. and also for the uh, LA RICS project to see that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stay on top of that. but because of the pressure that Congress is putting on the administration that the that these funds didn't do anything and they want to take it back and use it for debt reduction, the um, OMB has published this guideline to require this expedited spending. And then uh, the last thing I want to mention is that uh, be during the uh, with the stimulus funding, there was something called the RAT Board that was created, the recovery, terrible term, Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board. <laughs> Um, and that was a way in which to try to oversee how um, all of this funding was being done. Well, uh, they decided they liked that so much, they're creating something now called the Government Accountability and Transparency Board. That's a better uh, acronym for it. And what that's going to do is try to create ways to standardize the, the reporting uh, that's done by federal agencies on all federal grants or federal funding um, to try to to consolidate so that they had, don't have different databases maintaining information and also to improve on fraud detection. What I mention this is that more and more we're seeing where they're trying to standardize and centralize a lot of this federal um, grant funding and we're going to need to be in a position to respond to this in our own way by being more centralized in the way that we go after um, and account for and monitor federal funds. And with that I'll turn it over to Tyler. Tyler Munhall, CAO. <clears throat> uh, you've got the stimulus at a glance before you. This just reports out on our progress on expenditures and job creation. Uh, of the 611 million, you know, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funding <laughs> that we've received, uh, the city has expended 340 million, a little more than that. And 90% of the funds are either expended or committed. Um, we have also uh, 
generated 5.19 million work hours with these funds since the beginning. Great, thank you. Um, we do have one public speaker card. Mr. Walsh, if you'd like to come forward on number three. Like speaking here, uh, sort of a warm-up type meeting. And he can hear you. Bruce. And uh, was on California Channel two weeks ago on the Durkee uh, on FPPC. Got seven thousand that day. Seven thousand hits. Then they repeated. It, it got six thousand. Thirteen thousand. Sorry, 000. Mr. Walsh. Can I you talk about the, you. the stimulus, please? Oh, Thank oh you. I don't mind when you criticize me. I just don't like it when the when the. Uh, okay, we got to uh, stay on topic the, here. Thank the, you. Uh, lawyer for you. On redevelopment, Hollywood. The worst thing that happened to it's, Hollywood it's was the right? Academy it, leaving. Sorry, sir. It's, it's, it, we're on item number three. If you can uh, address that. Item no, number three. See, this is a warm-up. It's a uh, verbal report relative to the status of the APRA program. The APRA program, like many of your other programs, are doomed to fail as the real estate market, particularly in Hollywood, died the day that the uh, Academy walked out of their deal and it spent $50 million on the property. HollywoodHighlands.org, stay tuned for the meeting when I will be on topic. Thank you for uh, doing that during the meeting. That will close our general public comment. Any questions on the general update? Not this meeting of the... We already had general public comment, uh, Mr. Sachs. We, we dispensed with that at the beginning. This meeting of the uh, Jobs Committee is adjourned. We'll begin the full council meeting shortly. Thank you.